words carved in stone. Loki, an Aesir, has betrayed Baldur. Baldur is dead. Wotan, breaking silence, calls to Hermod, messenger of the gods, and tells him, Hermod, rise up onto my horse Sleipnir, and ride to the kingdom of Muspelheim. There you will now find Baldur. Ask that he be returned to us. And Hermod mounted on the horse of Wotan and rode for nine nights, and just as when Wotan had to hang on the Dressel tree to recover the rune. Hermod goes ever descending, the messenger of the gods, through dark paths to the subterranean kingdom of Muspelheim in the hollow earth. He arrived at the doors, where a shadow stood in his way. This is Modgund, guardian of the threshold. I am an Aesir, said Hermod, brother of Baldur, and I come to take him back to the surface of the earth, that we might rebuild beautiful Asgard. Modgund allowed him to pass, and bid him in the direction of the South Pole, having to cross over through the interior of the North Pole. Slipnir went forward without difficulty, and so Hermod came to where Baldur was to be found, in a spacious room, seated on a high seat of honour. At his side was his wife, Nana. Hermod said to him, Baldur, hear me. The Aesir ask that you come back, that you return to Asgard, but Baldur does not reply. It is heard, however, a deep voice coming from an invisible space. No, Baldur will not return. He will remain here until every being mourns with tears of blood for having lost him. Baldur made a sign to Hermod, the messenger of the gods, to come to him, and, without speaking, gave him the Draupnir ring, symbol of remembrance of eternal days. So Hermod, messenger of the gods, returned from his pilgrimage in search of Baldur, down through the inner earth, and began to travel over the surface of the impoverished, martyred land, exclaiming, Weep, weep, all for the absence of beautiful Baldur. Pray for his return among us. And the giants cried in the high mountains of the high valleys of the fatherland, as well as the invisible beings and even the Vanir in the high heavens. Many of us are still weeping. But in a gloomy cavern, a monster, half animal, half man, has its dry sockets. I am Tok, the obscure, she says, and I am the Fenrir wolf. Why should I weep? How has Baldur ever served me? He was the enemy of everything I represent. He was Loki, the traitor. He of a thousand shapes disguised and hidden in the muddy waters of Samsara. Only when the beings who inhabit the contaminated surface of the earth have wept all their tears at the end of the twilight of the gods, only then will it be possible for Baldur to return, riding the horse Slepnir, the eighth-legged of Wotan, the eight divisions of the time of the Aesir, the eight paths, and at the end of the Kaliunga, the white horse of Kalki, the ultimate Avatara. In his right hand he will wield the flaming sword, and he will come to rescue the heroes remaining here fighting for the restoration of Asgard. He will come with his world as he, his furious horde, his Einheirir, to defeat the traitors and the enemy, forever. And the Golden Age shall return, the reign of Saturn and Rhea, and a lineage of gold, the most precious, will populate one and the other pole. Because I, Hermod, messenger of the gods, have kept Draupnir ring the ring of remembrance of eternal days.